A reading, for, a reading from the book of Isaiah, uh, the 40th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the first verse, uh, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Grateful. What does it mean to be grateful? Gratefulness is a feeling of appreciation by a recipient of another's kindness, being the recipient of another's kindness. That kindness can be gifts, help, favors, or another form of generosity to another person. The word comes from the Latin word gratis, which means pleasing or thankful. For what are you grateful? I encourage you to take a moment to write a quick list on the back of your welcome card. Maybe in thinking about what gratefulness means, it leads you to prayer, and I invite you to share that as well. For what are you grateful I see some still writing. I see others like, I'm not going to do that. But I hope you thought of it. Welcome to our third of a five-week series on the prophet Isaiah. 
The book of Isaiah, which spans from 700 B.C. to 500 B.C., it is presumed to have up to three authors based on the length and the changes in its timeline. There were at least three, at least three authors. Presumably, Isaiah, which was proto-Isaiah, he wrote chapters 1 through 39, an anonymous author living during the exile, wrote 40 through 55, and another anonymous author living after the exile, wrote 56 through 66. These authors are often referred to as 1st Isaiah, 2nd Isaiah, and 3rd Isaiah. Our first two weeks, the 1st Isaiah shared how God desires us to continue to follow and have faith. They had seen in that 1st Isaiah's time the fall of the northern kingdom, and there was fear that the southern kingdom would fall, and it did. King Hezekiah failed to listen to Isaiah. He did not follow God's direction, for he had faith in his own wisdom, and disaster fell upon God's people. This week, we hear from 2nd Isaiah, who is writing while in exile after the defeat of that kingdom. And he told the people in the midst of exile to be grateful in spite of their circumstances. As we will hear next week, in doing so, they will find comfort. And in the final week, we'll hear that if we follow and have faith, are grateful, find and offer comfort, regardless of our situation, that will bring freedom. Today we are looking at gratefulness. Our readings point out much for which we should be grateful. We wrote down our own list here in these 20 verses. You find these things. The very foundation of the earth and its orbit. All creation, including humanity. God will ultimately provide justice over princes and rulers. And we have a creator who calls us by name. With not one of us missing. And from the Gospel of John, the word that was with God was God. All things came into being through him, including life, which is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Power to become children of God. The word was flesh and walked among us. And that word is full of grace and truth. So much to be grateful for as you read through just those 20 verses of 31,102 verses that are found in the Bible. Imagine how much gratefulness you can find if you continue to read. Here's the problem. Very few people read their Bible. So God's solution was to help us see gratefulness all around us throughout creation. If you look at your list, how many of your things have something about creation, something about a relationship, something that comes to you or has been given to you, for that is gratefulness. It's a feeling that we receive when we, we, a feeling we have when we receive something. In our Isaiah, Isaiah reading, what has been received is creation itself, including the stars. That is what the contemporary version translates the word host to be, and looking at that translation that's appropriate, host, the stars in heaven. Verse 26 was the theme verse for Camp Wapo this week, from which I returned, and as I said, Emily is there now. And the verse reads, look at the evening sky, using the contemporary version. Who created the stars? Who gave them each a name? Who leads them like an army? The Lord is so powerful that none of the stars are ever missing. At camp, it was by chance, that we would be able to see the northern lights and have stargazing. But that was not, that did not happen. We did not have great weather. However, we were reminded that although the clouds block our view, the stars are still shining. Instead of looking up at the stars in the sky, the camp projected stars on the ceiling, our own mini planetarium. 
And that space just came alive. One of our St. Luke's youth said that was his favorite experience at camp. And he's not alone. We hear from the psalmist in Psalm 8. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. So many people in the world, including you and me, due to the clouds that often hang over us, we fail to remember that that light is still shining. In fact, the writer of the Gospel of John states in verse 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The verb shines in the Greek is present tense and ongoing without end. The light continually shines. The ending phrase in the darkness did not overcome it. This is a past tense. It is finished. John is proclaiming because Jesus is the light of the world, darkness is no more. What we experience are only shadow remnants of darkness. Don't get me wrong, life has its difficulties, its tragedies, its disasters. James Watts in his Isaiah commentary reminds us, humankind is transitory and helpless like the grass and the wildflowers. God is the one who gives meaning and power. It requires us to wait and to hope for the promised future. If we continue the Isaiah reading to verse 31, we hear one of the promises as we sang it in our opening hymn. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Remember, this is the beginning of second Isaiah. They are in the midst of exile. Much like our reading from John where God's people are living in the midst of the Roman occupation. They are reminded, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him is life. And the life was the light of all people. Both Isaiah and John help me be grateful for not only the good times, but also getting through the shadows of life by focusing on light and trusting in it when life is clouded over and you cannot see it. But I know that the light continues to shine. And we have a wonderful example today. The light shines brightly with Lenny Roberts. She was so disappointed that she wasn't able to do her first communion, and I said, that light shines. I didn't say quite that, but for the sermon I'm saying that. And we can do it at another time. And she just lit up. And this was the first in the busy life of the Roberts family communion Sunday that they were actually in worship to enjoy and for her to make this, to complete her first communion. Her parents, Adam and Michelle, brought her to the waters of baptism to raise her as a follower of Jesus. They promised to bring her to the Lord's table. And Lenny, like all those before her, having been instructed, is invited not only to receive the bread and the wine, the body and the blood, but to share it with others in Jesus' name. Yes, there is much to be grateful for. Since the beginning, throughout all of the Isaiahs, during the time of Jesus, when the word was made flesh and walked among us, and now and in the future, as the light of life, true life, continually shines, casting out the shadows of this world so that we might see the glory of the Father's only Son full of grace and truth. I encourage you to look back at your list. Think of the people or the situations that created that feeling of gratefulness for you. Remember, gratefulness is a feeling of appreciation by a recipient of another's kindness. How will you share your kindness? How will you be generous? How will you be that witness, just as John the Baptist was, that pointed people to the salvation of Jesus? And because of that salvation, we can be grateful. Let us share that gratefulness 
with others. And let me close with Camp Devotion's daily blessings that we heard. May the same God who hung all the stars in the night sky give you strength for the journey of your life. Through weariness and beyond worry, may you be carried on wings of angels and shine like stars, reflecting God's love in the world. Amen.